Hi there, I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. On my website, which is thecookalongpodcast.com, you will find a recipe for brownies that when I made them were my favorite brownie recipe. They're called Fast and Gooey Double Chocolate Brownies, and I still recommend you give them a try. However, that was then, and this is now, I have a new favorite brownie recipe. They're called the Best One Bowl Brownies, and the one bowl part They might be the best one bowl brownies, but for me, all of a sudden, to me, they are the best brownies. I love these brownies. They are incredibly rich, moist, gooey, chewy, intensely chocolate, and to die for. The recipe that I have that I'm going to make with you today is from Claire Nolan and Alexander Roberts, and it was inspired by something on allrecipes.com. I'm going to talk about your equipment first because this one bowl thing means, you know, you need specific equipment. So the equipment you need is a nine inch pan, you know, a brownie pan, a nine inch square. I have used an eight inch square and it makes them taller and moister and it just takes them a little longer to cook. So if you have an eight inch square pan, that's okay too. You'll need parchment paper, a large bowl, because we mix all of it in the same bowl, a silicone spatula to scoop that stuff out of that bowl, a uh, sifter or strainer of some sort that you can sift flour and cocoa in, some nonstick spray, and a toothpick or two. The ingredients. You need one cup of unsalted butter. That's two whole sticks. See, there's a reason that these taste as good as they do and as moist as they do. You need one and a half cups of either semi-sweet chocolate chips or dark chocolate chips or some combination of the two of them together, which is what I think I'm going to do. And then we're going to divide those in half because some go to make the chocolate of the brownie and some go to be in the brownie and be melty in there as pieces of chocolate. You need one and a half cups of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, and I'm using dark brown sugar, one tablespoon of vanilla extract. See, there's another clue. That's a lot. That's a lot of vanilla. A teaspoon of salt, three large eggs, one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and a third of a cup of dark cocoa powder. There are two do-aheads. The first is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and the second is to assemble all the stuff you're going to need. Let's talk about those chocolate chips for a minute. Your choice of chips and where to use them will affect the final taste of these brownies. We're going to melt the chocolate with the butter. That's one of the most amazing pieces of this recipe is we're actually using the chocolate chips to make the batter. So if you use dark chocolate chips, your brownies will be more intensely chocolate. You can also use those as the ones that are just chocolate chip studs inside the brownies themselves. And then you have a really double dark chocolate, I guess, brownie. You could do the same with the semi-sweet, which has a little higher sugar content. Then your brownies would be less intensely chocolate And you could also use the semi-sweet chocolates in the brownies. Now, the other options, of course, are to mix and match. The semi-sweet that I have here in front of me is 51% cocoa. And the dark chocolate I have in front of me is 62% cocoa. That's a significant difference. So then I'm thinking, well, what if I use one kind for the batter and one kind for the inside? And then I'm stuck because do I want a little bit sweeter brownie? with dark chocolate studs, or do I want a little bit darker chocolate, denser brownie with a little bit sweeter studs? I think that's what I want. I think that's what I want. Do I? I think that's what I want. And maybe I'll mix some of the dark chocolate chunks as studs as well. I don't know what else to call them, but you know, the ones that are in there that aren't part of the batter. All right, let's do the boring stuff first. And that would be lining the pan with parchment paper. So we need a nice big square of parchment paper. 
Oh, sorry about the noise. Just squish it down in the pan. It isn't going to fit well, and it's going to be all wrinkly. And that's just the way of the world. Best if you don't put holes in it. I'm going to try again. Try not to put my thumb through it this time. Boy, I'm really sorry. This is so loud. <laughs> this is a new... I just opened a brand new box of parchment paper that I got at Costco. Kirkland Signature Parchment Paper. And this may sound silly, but it's I think it's the loudest parchment paper I've ever worked with. Now the weird part comes. Despite using the parchment paper, it's going to kind of pop back up out of that pan. We want to spray it. So you're spraying the inside of the parchment paper even though it's parchment paper and shouldn't stick. Tells you how sticky these brownies get, right? All right, now in a large microwavable bowl. That's the other thing. A lot of this is done in the microwave. But this is the part that just blew me away because it's so intense. It just is. Put your whole cup, both your sticks of your unsalted butter into a large microwavable bowl. Mine happens to be frozen, so I'm going to have to take longer than you are. But what you're going to do is then add also a cup of chocolate chips. And here's where you got to make your choice. And I think I'm going with the dark chocolate. And we'll see what I do when we come to the ones in the middle. Wow, that's also really loud. I can't find dark chocolate chips where I live. <laughs> Silly. But I got something called dark chocolate chunks, and they're squares instead of the little Hershey's Kiss-shaped kind of thing. I don't care what shape they are. I just care what they taste like and how dark they are. And I think this is just deciding me because it's using up most of a bag to fill up this cup. But it's going to leave me a few. And those few are going to go in later. That's what I've just decided. So your butter and your chocolate chips go into this microwavable bowl. And then you microwave it on high for just one and a half minutes. 90 seconds. That's all it takes. Although, like I said, mine might take a few minutes longer just because my butter is frozen. Probably I've told you before, butter is so expensive, and I do love it so, both for cooking and just for eating on my toast or on a cinnamon roll or on a baked potato or whatever. I like real butter, and it's super expensive. So whenever it's on sale, which is usually around the holidays, various holidays around the year, I buy a bunch of it. And I stick it in my freezer. The only downside to that is that then when I need it for baking, I don't remember that I needed to have gotten it out of the freezer ahead of time to defrost. And it would have saved me some guessing if I had managed to remember to get it out before I started this podcast. When your minute and a half is up, pull it out of the microwave and set it aside. Don't stir it. Set it aside and set a timer for three minutes. We're going to just leave it to sit. It's melting the chocolate for us is what it's doing that because it's hot now. And while it's doing that, let's measure out some other stuff. If you haven't already done so, you can measure out your one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Maybe this is silly, but you know, it fills the time. So I'm just throwing that one and a half cups in a bowl, and then I won't have to think. I'll just dump the bowl in. The measuring will all be already done. And the three-quarter cup of brown sugar. And these both go in at the same time so it can go in the same bowl. Pack that brown sugar as you measure it. You want it packed, not loose in the measuring cup. We can also add the salt to that because it goes in at the same time. This is a whole teaspoon of regular salt, preferably that does not have iodine in it. Because if you haven't heard me say so before, you don't want to use iodized salt whenever you can help it. Because iodine has got a flavor to it, and it's not a good flavor. It's kind of a bitter flavor. So I'm just using sea salt. If you're using kosher salt, that's okay too. 
Just know that it's not quite as salty as sea salt, so you might need to use a little extra. All right, now as we get to the three-minute mark, I should have offered the possibility that you might want one more piece of equipment, which is a whisk. You don't have to use a whisk. It's kind of a handy tool at this point, but you can use just your spoon. We're just kind of whisking all this together now. The butter is melted, the chocolate is melted, and we're just making this gorgeous dark pool of chocolate out of it. Now we're going to throw in that bowl of the sugars. So the granulated sugar, the brown sugar, the salt, they're all going in. And the vanilla goes in at this point. I have to decide whether I'm going to use my double strength vanilla. Do I want it really vanilla-y? I think I won't this time. I'm going to use the regular single strength vanilla because it's a lot. It's a whole tablespoon. That's an enormous amount of vanilla, which will hurt if you're using the real thing because vanilla is so expensive right now. However, if you haven't already seen it, there's a blog on the Cook Along Podcast website that talks about real vanilla versus imitation vanilla. And I think you'll be surprised at what the results of the recent testing has been. You might want to check out that article. I was certainly surprised. Now we've got all of that together in this pot, this microwavable bowl, and we're whisking it together or stirring it with your spoon. And actually, the whisk at this point becomes a little bit problematic because stuff clumps up in the middle. I have to try to get that brown sugar out of there. All right, now the eggs go in. If you're at all worried about getting shell in your batter, crack the eggs into a bowl first and then fish the shell out if you lose any. Oh, oh dear God. Oh my God. You guys. Oh my God, this egg is green. Oh my God. Oh, you have no idea. Oh my God, I think. Oh, this is going to break my heart. Ah, shoot. No, I guess it's just rotten. Oh my God. Okay. It smells terrible. Oh, I thought for a minute. Ha. Huh. Imagine you know what I thought for a minute. I thought maybe I, I had an egg that had a chick in it, you know? Oh my God. Okay. Whew. Okay. This is the first time I've ever smelled a truly rotten egg. Oh my God. Ooh, well, there's another reason to crack your eggs into something other than your main bowl. Wow, that's never happened to me before. Holy smoke. It wasn't cracked or anything that I could see. I don't know why that happened. Ah, it's kind of grossing me out. Ugh. Ugh. Thank goodness I caught it before it went in this mix. It just was green. It's like some of the yolk... Was looked like it was hard boiled, and then some of it was just this dark green. The yolk, ah, ooh, yeah. <sighs> okay, I have to get over this now. Um, ooh. So uh, we're whisking the eggs into the brownie mix. All right, Cindy, move on. Get over it. The eggs are going to take a minute to whisk in here because they don't like to incorporate. It's just the nature of eggs. And we do want it all the way mixed in. Wow, I should have taken a picture. Oh, my God. I just wanted it out of my house. I'm creeped out. I'm creeped out. Bah! All right, that really seals the deal for me. I will never again crack my eggs directly into my batter. I almost ruined this whole batch of brownies by getting some of that in here. And so it's not just about the shell anymore. It's not just about bits of shell anymore. I will always, from here on out, crack my eggs into a bowl before I put them into my batter. Okay. Now I'm putting my whisk away. I don't use a sifter anymore. I find them difficult for my hand to keep doing that thing, that squeezing thing over and over and over. So I don't use it. I use a sieve, a really fine sieve. So I'm going to place that over the bowl now. And we still have to do the spooning thing, okay? In other words, stir up your flour first before you measure it and then spoon it into the cup. We're looking for a cup and a quarter here. So let's start with the cup. Spoon it into the top of the cup and then level that off with the top of your spoon. This keeps us from getting too much flour, which would make this dense and dry, 
not dense in a good way, just harder. You're going to lose the gooeyness. And then you dump that in your sieve. And I'm going to add the other quarter cup. This is tricky because if you can't put your sieve over the bowl, you got a problem. You might want to do this over a uh, plate or something. And then add your other quarter cup. And now we're going to add the cocoa powder. And no, in case you're wondering, I am not over it. I'm just trying to move on. How much cocoa? Oh, a third of a cup. This we don't care because if it's too densely packed, I don't think that's going to break anybody's heart if they like chocolate. So I'm just scooping this. And I use Dutch processed cocoa because it's less bitter. Okay, there's another blog on the website. First, dump your third of a cup in with the flour. Natural cocoa. It's got some acid on it. What I'm doing while I'm talking to you, by the way, is tapping the sieve against the side of my hand so that the flour and the cocoa are sifting down on top of my chocolate gooey stuff. Anyway, when they make a Dutch cocoa, they wash the acids off. And what that does is it makes the chocolate more intense because you're not getting the taste of the acids. You're getting only the taste of the chocolate that's left behind. They do have different uses in different kinds of recipes. Because of the acid, they react differently with leavening agents. And there is a blog on my website called Natural or Dutch Process that can educate you about the whole shebang, about what's different about them. If you're interested, check it out. So now we've sifted in the flour and the cocoa powder. And we're just going to stir that together kind of slowly because otherwise you're going to spill about this stuff all over your kitchen. Just a really gentle folding in until it's all kind of wet. Let's stir it a little bit further so that it's not quite this dry, but we don't want to over stir it. Anytime you're baking anything that's kind of bread-like, if you over stir it, it changes the texture and it makes it kind of harder. It's hard to explain, but it's less desirable. I'm just going to say that because that's really what the bottom line is. It's less desirable if you overstir it and it starts to get a little tough. Now that doesn't count breads, of course, because those you're mixing on purpose to get the gluten to behave in a certain way. All right, I'm going to take a picture that shows you where we're at before we add the chocolate chips. Now the decision must be made. So the, the amount of chips we're looking for at this point is a half a cup. It's not a ton. And like I said, I have just a few of the chunks left. Actually, it's probably about a quarter of a cup. That's good. That seems like a good amount. And then I'm filling the rest of the half cup with regular semi-sweet chocolate chips. Because these stay whole in the batter. They'll melt and they'll become little treasure discoveries as you're eating your brownies. And then we stir that in as well. And now we can stir in the rest of that dry flour all together with the chips until we have a nice, what's the word I want? Amalgamated wet dough. Get all those chips mixed in so they're not all in one spot, by the way. And then as you've probably guessed, we pour that into the parchment paper that we greased with the cooking spray. Now the parchment paper finally goes back down <laughs> into the bottom of the pan. Wow, it smells good. It smells like chocolate. It's really helping get rid of the bad smell in my kitchen from the egg. And no, no, I'm not still over it. I don't expect to get over it anytime soon. <laughs> I can't believe I, I've never had anything like that happen. I, I guess I should count myself lucky. I suppose I'm a weenie. If I lived on a farm, that must happen sort of often because you can't tell, right? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, <sighs> I already got all the batter out of my glass bowl. And mine, again, is in an 8-inch pan because it turns out, I guess I think I didn't realize this, I don't even own a 9-inch square pan. I always use an 8-inch square pan which means my cooking time is going to be different than yours if you're using a 9-inch pan. What we're doing at this point is just spreading this out. Use the spoon, clean it off with another spoon or your finger or however you like to do that so that all the batter is in the pan, not just on the back or the front of the spoon. 
and then spread it around inside the pan until it's as flat as you can get it. Which probably isn't going to be very flat because this batter is pretty thick. There we go. Cleaning off the spoon one more time. It's about as even as I'm going to be able to get it. And this goes in the oven now. And you're going to bake it for 35 to 40 minutes. Unless you're using an 8 inch pan like I am. In which case it's probably going to be closer to 45 minutes. And the way you know when it's done is by sticking in that toothpick I had you pull out. It should go in the center and when you pull it back out, it should have a few moist crumbs attached to it. So not completely clean, because that means you overcooked it, but not goopy. Okay, it's going to pull out a few crumbs with it. In the oven it goes. Kind of in the middle of your 350 degree preheated oven. Set your timer for, if you're using a 9 inch pan, set it for 35 minutes. If you're using an 8 inch pan, set it for 40 minutes. Come back and test it and then just keep cooking it in three to five minute increments until you get that just a few crumbs on the toothpick thing happening. And this is supposed to make 16 brownies. So in this square pan, when it's all cooked, you're going to make four cuts in each direction. So you have 16 brownies because these are really very rich. And in fact, you might find that you need to take off the edge of the richness with a little vanilla ice cream on top. As I said, this is now my favorite brownie recipe. I just think the flavor is amazing and the texture, because I like my brownies chewy, not cakey. I should have said that in the beginning because that might influence whether you will even like this. If you like cakey brownies, this is not your thing. This is a really dense, chewy, moist, gooey brownie. Oh my gosh, I kind of can't wait till it comes out of the oven. <laughs> it's just I'm talking myself into really wanting one. That's today's recipe, the best one bowl brownies. Leave me a message on the Facebook page for the Cook Along Podcast and let me know what you think of these and whether you think you have something better. I would love to hear about it. I am willing to try it if you think you got something better than this. Remember that I have a page on Patreon, patreon.com, and look for the Cook Along podcast, where you can help contribute to the making of this podcast. In fact, I'm going to be remodeling my kitchen soon. Tell your friends you listen to the Cook Along podcast. And until next time, happy cooking! Happy cooking!